Hi everybody, uh, welcome to an Expert Liberation interview. Um, I'm Ben Hunt, the Expert Liberator, and I'm here with a very dear friend of mine, Phil Escott. Um, Phil, you and I have known each other for only a year, I would say. But, um, you know, I, I had to include your story in the Expert Liberation book um, because it's, it's just a fascinating tale of... Uh, you know, a journey that, that I would say is very much like my own, you know, that I started off in web design and I followed my nose through all types of things and ended up in really fascinated with soil and regenerative agriculture and stuff. And it eventually led me to your Facebook group and eventually, um, to cut a long story short, we've ended up being business partners and uh, you have read uh, Expert Liberation. So I, I just thought it would be really interesting for, to, for people to hear you uh, tell your story about the, the journey that, that you've been on. And then, you know, we'll, we'll come to how we got together and, and, you know, look ahead maybe to the future a bit. So um, do we, we go back to about 2010, I think, do we, for um, the, uh, I would say, defining moment in your, in your story which is when you found yourself suddenly with your health crippled. Does it go back that far to 2010? I would say it goes back a lot further. I mean, first of all, yeah, it's, it's, thank you for, for getting me on. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a joy to talk about this stuff because I think I always end up just talking, sort of getting interviewed about diet stuff. And, and this, is, this is cool. And, and it's funny, isn't it? It's just a year. It seems like loads longer than that. And that's not because it's been horrifically unpleasant and we've had restraining orders or anything like that. I mean, you know, it's, it's a funny, we'll come to it later, but this sort of mastermind alliance we've got, it's, it's wonderful. When you do follow your own heart and you find the people who really resonate with you, it's, it just, nothing really seems like work anymore, does it? It's marvelous. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. But, but um, my story goes back a long way. I'm, it started with an interest in health and diet and spirituality and anything like that of how to get to a state where there's there's tremendous comfort in in the body and it's very very um adaptable and healthy and strong and um and the mind as well and the spirit i mean everything i was interested in but it it, it did yeah I, I i wrote articles i wrote books and things through the 90s um I thought I was a tremendous expert and then I kind of got bored with it all after giving up a gym that I was running and um, I, I uh, just fell off the wagon really and started eating rubbish. I was very much sort of a, a plant-based guy but it was pretty much sort of uh, you know cheese on toast rather than anything that normal people would think are healthy that I don't particularly think anymore but um, so I fell off the wagon, got pretty fat and started joints, started hurting a lot, lot of, lots of health issues mounting up that I didn't really listen to because I thought, oh, well, it's just aging. You know, so many people think that sort of thing. And then through sort of 2008, 2009, I had horrific back pain all the time. Um, and I was living on painkillers and anti-inflammatories. And then... Uh, early 2010, I had a bout of something called iritis, which is where the the um, uh, iris kind of sticks to the lens. It's horrible. It's all, it's an inflammation in the eyes. It's an absolute agony to refocus. It's a horrible thing. And I remember them asking me at the time, have you got some serious arthritis? And I, I no, I didn't think so. Actually, I did, but I didn't really know. I, didn't, I hadn't figured it out. But coming back from a holiday in Thailand and finding, uh, you know, two weeks after that, uh, one ankle blew up and then the other ankle and, and then the knee and then loads of other joints. And, and it, it really started running rampant. I think the meds that I was taking to stop the back pain and um, digestive issues really put the, uh, the the last straw in place that broke the camel's back. So you're on like non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and stuff because they can... Yeah, yeah. And those protein... Oh, pump, duck, yeah, and those protein pump inhibitors, you know, when you've got reflux, which are absolute waste of time. Well, I mean, they're worse than that. They're downright dangerous. Yes, they allow you to eat curries at 11 o'clock at night without having reflux all night, but they're a bargain with the devil. They're awful things. Um, 
anyway, so yeah, I, I, I found myself completely crippled and I thought, why me? You know, I'm a, I'm a great yogi. I, I know exactly how to eat, uh, even if, you know, I've fallen off the wagon a bit. Um, and it was, it was, it was weird actually, because I just decided to get into social media. And in 2009, I'd started up a, a, a website um, with my book that I'd written in 96. And, and I thought I'll chart my own return to health. And it was funny that when I went back onto what I thought was healthy, it was actually when I got really sick. <laughs> I was kind of better off on the wheat and dairy for a while. But um, then it was kind of embarrassing. And I thought, well, I can't put any of this up. So I, I was trashed for a couple of years, really. And I had to find my way out. And I was so into that plant-based thing, went down the veganism route, which was a complete disaster. I ended up absolutely stick thin, lost 90 pounds, and I was properly emaciated and still in flame, still in pain. And eventually I came across um, low carb eating and high fat and carnivory and things started to turn around. And by about 2013, 2014, I was back playing the drums. So I'm a drummer as well. And I, things were looking quite good, but, but then they really galloped on a pace in 2015 when I discovered carnivory. And what my passion has always been, I think, apart from playing drums, what is is helping people to grow spiritually physically mentally you know emotionally and i realized that i really didn't know any of this stuff i thought i did i'd studied loads of traditional things not not, not officially but just read a billion books and you know that sort of thing and always up for helping people and and you had kind of mediocre results but then when i started a, a um a Facebook group, 100% Carnivore and Beyond, was, was the time when I really, uh, well, first of all, I wrote a book, Arthritis, The Best Thing That Ever Happened to Me. Yeah, Starting... I have that here. Oh, cool. There it I is. find copy that um, <laughs> I'm reading through. So I, I found uh, the, um, the, the medical profession to be utterly useless for chronic disease and I had to find my way out. The early part of the book is all the struggles with the medical professionals and then finding my way into diet and emotional balancing and that sort of thing. And the third part of the book is really awakenings that have happened um, along the way and, and even resisting awakenings, which, which is sort of fighting against what is, which often causes autoimmunity as well. Um, it all piles up with many different factors. And I started, the, 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 the picture started to become clear over the two years from 2010 to 2012, when I, I had quite a bit of money and I was really lucky to be able to just sit on the sofa in agony and just research 12 hours a day. And I got to know various amazing docs and healers, you know, out there. When I say healers, I don't mean sort of, uh, you know, faith healers or anything, but just people who really know how to advise somebody to allow their body to heal themselves. And then, um, getting into carnivory i haven't eaten a plant for five years now um apart from a couple of mouthfuls here and there but literally sort of three or four mouthfuls here and there for five years maybe a roast potato here and that sort of thing but that's it <coughs> certainly no green veg um and i i started a facebook group for just a few friends in 2018 yeah at christmas and it was only like five people who said, oh, you eat only meat. And we've been trying the paleo diet, not really had so many good results. And how about uh, you help us out with that? So I started, the, I started that off and, and suddenly people started joining. It was bizarre. And um, now I think, what, what are we on, Ben? You're in it 13,000 and something. Yeah, something I think, like that. Yeah. As, we, as we speak in, 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 in April 2020 now. And, and that was great. I, it, and what it allowed me to do was to start doing, I was doing a few already, but to do more consultations and really see how what I had learned during my illness had, had, um, uh, could help other people. And it's been so incredibly rewarding. And it's just been from being a, an old hippie who has completely ignored uh, any sort of gainful employment I know I've done many things from gemstone dealing to dispatch riding to selling oriental carpets to um, running you know, a gym. Sorry, running a gym, running a gym. Yeah, playing drums and, and you know loads of weird things I've done. Property development and 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 sort of that kind of thing. 
but I've always done my own thing, but they've never really got my heart apart from the drumming. So, um, being able to actually talk to people and have it that it's so rewarding. I get these messages. Wow. This has cleared up. The arthritis has cleared up I have to make a disclaimer. I don't make any, I don't give any medical advice. I, it's, it's just telling people what to cut out to allow their bodies to heal. And 90% of the time they do. Um, it's, it's fabulous. It's actually very, very simple, but it takes a long time to dig up that knowledge. And I'm sure if a lot of people are listening, they have passions that they've looked into that they know that they know more about than your average person. And don't be shy, you know, go out there for read, read Ben's book and, and uh, get it on audio book as I did, cause I'm a lazy bugger. But uh, it's it just to get those ideas into your head to, 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 um, inc to, to give you confidence that you can use your own knowledge to help people. Because quite often, I think it's very difficult to listen to somebody in any field who is the most advanced because you don't understand. It's quite good to go to somebody who's maybe on the next level and maybe there might be 10 levels or 100 levels, but you can go to these levels next and next and next. <coughs> and I'm no great scientist. I understand some of it and I understand some of the physiology behind what I do as I study the great masters, but it doesn't really go in. I'm not a science head, but I can tell people all the practical things to do and why they work. Um, and you, you worked out so much of this for yourself through self-experimentation, yeah. what you call the, the N equals one approach, where the, the sample size for the experiment is, is just one individual. That's right. But a lot of people, you know, particularly vegans, will slate me for saying, um, and they say, oh, well, it's just you then. It's, there's no proof. There's no research. There's no, but actually there is. There's enormous amount of research. I think when one looks into the world of science, you have to look at a lot of the science that's sponsored and, and nonsensical in, in, that's mostly on the mainstream. And people tend to believe that, but there is actually some great science out there that, that is independent. And they were coming to the same conclusions as I was, um, particularly about diet and light and EMFs, that kind of thing. And, the, and also there are some tremendous experts who are coming across to it now and really shouting about it. But also, more, if not so much in 2010, there weren't so many people, but now there's so many people who have, have come across to it and their stories are out there. <clears throat> the people criticize them for being anecdotes, but they're actually more accurate than the epidemiological um, evidence that they have from studies. So I was seeing people finding that. And as I went on, my confidence grew because I was seeing lots of other people finding this independently. And then the doctors started popping up, you know, admitting to it and saying, yes, this is working. And I can't believe what it's doing to my patients. It's they're all healing. And the great doctors who do that, who are interested in seeing people's health recover rather than the financial aspect of it, they can't help it, even if it risks their careers. And, and they do it and they come out and they talk and they shout louder than I do about it. Um, and this was marvelous because not only when you're following your passion and maybe I set up the Facebook group, not for any financial gain, although it's led to it in indirect ways, um, so like so, it was just an expression of, you know, you wanted to, to do, like you say, you're a conduit that yeah, you, absolutely, you yeah. absorb the knowledge from all these different fields, apply it to yourself, get results and then share. And it's, that's the, the kind of the natural cyclical flow of nature, really. Exactly. I mean, I mean, look at the contacts we've got now. I mean, I met Ben through that group. Um, I, I met Dr. Jeremy Ayers, who, who we work with now, who's kind of dropped the doctor, hasn't he? <laughs> um graham norbury you know that after our, the four of us who are partners in the human unleashed that was mentioned also in, in ben's book um but it's it's when when you have a niche like that and people come along you you'll find those kind of like minds which you would never find sitting at home thinking i i can't put myself out there but you just mm -hmm. never know what's going to happen you never know the people it's who like, are going to turn up it's like one of those traps isn't it you know that we can fall into thinking i'm not an expert i'm not the expert in this stuff and therefore I, am, I don't have permission because I'm not qualified. I don't have permission to, to share this stuff. But I think just from what you've described so far, there are some definitely some themes coming through, Phil. And one of them, I would say, is definitely this deep-seated desire to help others. You know? Definitely, yeah. Um, and it also seems as though, you know, so, so you... You know, you, you learned some stuff, you got some results and you, you felt the urge to share. So you set up this Facebook group with no real motive to it other than 
to have a place where you could share and discuss and continue to explore. And it happens to have exploded to 13,000 people in the space of 18 months. Now, to me, that would suggest that, that what you did when you stumbled on carnivory through your own um, determined research is that you, you happened to, you happened on a wave, you, you, you caught a wave. Um, and that's very often, it's, it's like, this is what I, I try and um, advise people to do. If you think about like a surfer, a surfer who wants to ride a big wave, first they have to paddle out into the ocean like crazy, you know, and then get themselves in the right position so that when that wave starts to swell, they can pop up on the board and do their, do their stuff. And you want to be the person that's at that point when that wave arrives, which takes some luck and some kind of maybe intuition or anticipation as well. Because carnivory, in, literally in the last like, two years, has suddenly become a big thing. And, and someone described you a few months ago as the, what was it, the godfather of carnivory. That was weird, wasn't it? Too, yeah. too, it's, when, you, when you do these things and set, set this kind of thing up and end up a big fish in a, in a little pond, you get a lot of interviews. And, and so then it was two people independently within a month, I think, came up with this. Because I asked one of them, I said, oh, you're not using that again. He said, does somebody else come up with it? It was really strange. Yeah, it was, it was sort of, um, I, one, at one point, I think I was the second most searched on, on Google for carnivory in the world. And I thought, isn't that bizarre? It did. You do get imposter syndrome kicking in all the time, and you think this is very strange. But I don't think I am anymore. There's so there's some docs come up who get far more hits. But um, I think what what I have is a, a, a unique sort of little niche of 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 relating carnivory to spirituality, which it usually isn't, but I think it very much is. And um, and and just taking into account all of the things that we've now. Take, taken even further in the human unleashed which is all the ancestral disconnects because it's not about carnivory it's just that there's so much nonsense built up around diet you end up talking about that for longer mm. so, so let's, let's tell the, the story stuff, yeah yeah how, how did that next phase come about because you bumped into graham and then jeremy and then me completely separately yeah, well, uh, it was, um, I was giving a talk locally and um, it was on sort of ancestral, ancestral health awareness or something, you know, diet and lifestyle. And in the middle of it, a guy walked in with some orange shades on, some orange glasses, blue blocking glasses. And I thought, ah, this guy probably looks like he knows what he's talking about. I'll look forward to talking to him afterwards. And it was Graham and, and it came came to light that he he was so incredibly knowledgeable and we came we became great friends that was before i even set up the facebook group but then uh, jeremy has popped up on the facebook group having been a, a great healer for 30 years and, and then having discovered carnivory almost as one of the final pieces of the puzzle that that really accelerates people's health which blew his mind as it did all of us you know we're, we're not just sort of mad cavemen who suddenly discovered this most of us have been in every single diet or tried every single diet under the sun and and seen the results of it um and and then um it was around the same time i think you popped up and said you'd like to help out with my subtraction method course and then i watched one of your your, your free co video courses and i was blown away and i thought i've got to get this dude on board it's great and I thought, you know, I was a bit in awe of you, to be honest. I mean, this guy knows about marketing and stuff. I'm terrible with all that kind of thing. I thought, oh, you know, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to Ben. And it's funny now because we're just mates, still have the same respect, but we're, we're, we're mates and that's cool. It's these funny uh, um, sort of uh, uh, preconceptions you have of people, you know, that there's this sort of hardcore marketer. I'll never get in touch with him. But, but you do, and, and, and you can make these connections. That's one thing I've always been good at that I don't have any imposter syndrome about. I am very good at making connections, always have been in music, in everything. I, you know, if there's some very famous drummer I want to take lessons with, I'll take them. I'll get in touch with him and I'll take them. I won't sort of go, oh, you can't talk to them. No, he's just some guy. You know, they're all just some guy. So, so carry on. Um, and um, 
then Ben got kind of interested in what we were doing with our plans with the Human Unleashed. It wasn't called that then. And we all drove over in a van and uh, hung out at Ben's amazing place with all the ducks and dogs and God knows what that he's got running around. And uh, the, the, the plans were formed. And it was, a, it was a quite an amazing weekend, really. I think it was a turning point for all of us. Um, so that's how that worked out. And, and then Ben, with his technical wizardry, has been setting up the websites and does all the, uh, does all the videos and stuff, which, uh, which is beyond me. And, uh, and we just get to blather and uh, do the research and then bring it into this, this space. And it's, it's been a, just a wonderful job. I can't think of anything I'd rather be doing. So, and, and that just came from being incredibly irresponsible, not going and getting a proper job, <laughs> blowing the money that I did have, which if I'd read, read, read Ben's book back in sort of 2003, particularly when, when I ended up with quite a bit of money, uh, from an inheritance that lasted quite a long time actually on and off with a bit of property developing and whatever but then when I got sick we just used it all up but looking back now I'd have known exactly what to do even when I was sick and sit sitting on the sofa of how to hang on to that money but now it's exciting I've got to do it from square one again and um, and, and it's beginning to work and, it, and it's um, it, it's yeah lovely lovely journey of just being irresponsible and going against everybody's advice and following my heart which which is what's so great about Ben's book, because that's basically what it tells you to do. And then it gets into the technical stuff about what to do, but just to have faith in, 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 in your own heart, because that's what we're here for. You know, you get, like everybody always says, people on their deathbed never wish that they worked more. But if you never work, like doing something that is your passion, you're not going to have that regret on your deathbed, I don't think. Mm, yeah. So following your heart and, and, and I think part of it is also accepting that, that it's a journey. That there is no destination in life, you know, other than death one day, you know. <laughs> but just take it each, you know, each day as it comes. And, and, you know, like you said, you've been, you've definitely got a talent for making those connections as well, which I think has, has been really, really useful. You know, because this Human Unleashed group wouldn't be together if you hadn't, first decided just to put on a live event for, you know, no particular reason, you know, in, in your local area, in a church hall or wherever it was. And then, you know, that, that, so what we're doing is we, cre you've created the, an environment where these chance happenings can occur, you know, and that's what it's about. If you stay home and you don't write and you don't blog and you don't put on events in church halls and you don't, contact your, your heroes and say, let's do something, then you know, it doesn't happen. You, you, you do just have to put the imposter syndrome to one side, if there is any, and just go for it. Oh, God, I, I still get it. I mean, most times we talk, I get it, unless it's a subject that I'm incredibly um, up on. Because recently we've been doing all the talks about the present crazy situation. And Jeremy and, uh, and, and, and Graham just, just go off on one, don't they, for so long. And they know way more than me. And I can, I, could pro I can do it on my own if somebody interviews me. I've been doing a few interviews recently where I've been talking about it. And I, I can sketch out the basics of what I think might be going wrong now. Um, but Jeremy and Graham go into beautiful detail. And I sit there having imposter syndrome sometimes. And I think, wow. And then I always remind myself of, of some of many, many very, very successful people who have always said, what's the secret? to work with people who are much smarter than you and don't worry about it. You know, I guess there's that's always also a key. And, and I mentioned that in the book is that you individually do not have to be the world's expert in a particular thing in order to be a focal point for that thing for, for the world. And, and you, you did that, you know, for autoimmunity, for carnivory. And that was pretty much by accident. It's just the fact that you showed up and put yourself out there and you created the group, you know, and now I've put your picture on the, on the group banner and you know, I know. You, you're kind of a celebrity now, but I, no, uh, no, kind of, I was kind of resisting that for a bit. Wasn't I? <laughs> no, nobody comes up and pins a badge on you, you know, to say you are now officially, you know, an expert and you, you now have permission to go out and, and to, to help people. No, you know, you, you, it's the difference between um, have do be and be do have. You know, the traditional, 
psychology is have do be if i had you know phil's talent or graham's brain or jeremy's experience you know in all these things then i could do what an expert does i could do what you know the celebrity does and then i would be successful then i will be happy then i will be rich or whatever right but the reality is it doesn't work like that because no one's ever going to come and you know just award you anything you, you have to go make it yourself so it's actually have do be you have to um sorry it's be do have you have to be that person starting now and then because you are that person then you go out and you um you do the things that 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 person does if you are you know the godfather of carnivory or you're the autoimmunity guy or the expert liberation guy you get up on a Monday morning and you do what that person does because it's who you are. It's like, that's what kind of animal you are. And then, um, <clears throat> and then you will have the outcomes that will, you know, follow along as, as you've shown. And you did a, um, you put on a conference as well. That wasn't just before, probably just before we met last year in Spain. Yeah, it was in, in a April last year in Spain and, and that was wonderful. Jeremy and Graham were there. I wish you'd been there. Um, it was, um, we, we just made so many beautiful contacts. What, what's so great is that it's not just that we found each other, but I mean, how many contacts have we got now? I mean, really, really world-class doctors, researchers, all kinds who, who we call friends and, and who have, I was really touched when um, I did that subtraction method, the autoimmunity course. <clears throat> and the testimonials I got from some health professionals who were willing to actually put their names on that course when I'm just some dude who fixed himself. But then again, when you think about it, being some dude who's just fixed himself is probably a hell of a lot more knowledge than you get in seven years of, of, of medical school, really, in practical terms, especially since all the solutions they have don't fix anybody with autoimmunity. They say it's incurable. So um, that was wonderful. The, the, the connections we made and, and a lot of them were made at the at the retreat we already knew these people people like dr paul mabry dr jofia clements i mean f really fantastic open-minded wonderful doctors and um and this year we were going to have sean baker along and some great people as well and, and of course this um this coronavirus thing has scuppered our plans with that one so we're going to have to postpone at least which was a shame but uh, i'm sure we'll do loads more in the future um, and, and that's, that's a real pleasure. I mean, it's a lot of work to set up. I, I wouldn't like you and I always ch chat about no more accommodation, <laughs> just, just get people along to, 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 to an event. And, but then again, that event, because it was so special because there weren't, there was only a few people, maybe 50 people maximum, and they were staying in the same place, a beautiful retreat. I mean, when you actually get there and the organization's done, it, it, there's nothing quite so rewarding as being able to hang out. Because you can invite your heroes to come and talk. And then you can hang out with them for a week by a pool and, and having a few drinks in a bar at night. I mean, it's, it's a really amazing experience. And you hear things that you would never hear from their online stuff and public stuff. And you get to know them in a way that you never would before. You know, I, I already knew a lot about Jofia Clements, for example, but, but she's a very reserved character and nothing much comes out. But having stayed in a villa with her for a few days, I know who Jofia is, you know, and it was wonderful. She came out of her shell and she's become a great friend. And I think we've got something very special with the Human Unleashed because, I mean, Jofia is a very respected um, uh, uh, microbiologist, I think, is her, is her main uh, um, profession her, her qualifications and now she works with with paleo medicina in hungary just doing fantastic work reversing all kinds of disease but to have her come out of her shell to the point that she was kind of hugging us at the end and saying i've never felt so um accepted and so supported in in, in any environment and thank you and and i think this is what people are feeling from from the fact that how we, well we get on you know because people comment when we do our sort of four-way videos video chats and it's always the great camaraderie the respect we have for each other and and that comes through you can't fake that and the way that people are going to find like minds that they can get on with that well 
it's through just following your heart and putting yourself out there and the people will come to you. You might, you might get a six months down the line, you haven't found them, you go, this is nonsense, but they will come to you. It always reminds me of um, that cartoon where a guy's digging and digging a tunnel, you know, looking for gold and, and he digs sort of yards and yards in and then he's one inch from that seam of gold and he just goes, I've had enough and he walks away. And it's usually at that point, if you break through that point, that the magic happens where you just think, I've had enough. You know, so many times you hear it, don't you, in success stories where they say, I was on the point of giving up. I was, I, nothing was working. And then suddenly such and such happened. And I, and I think you have to realize that you do go through down times, you go through up times. It's not all tremendous uh, success every single day. You have to slog through certain bits of swamp, you know, to get to the mountain. And then very often live, you know, tighten your belt and, you know, live, live off very little while you allow yourself to follow your dreams. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, if, if you're tied to a nine to five job that takes the best energy that you've got five days a week, that's really hard to do. So what, you know, one, what... one thing I was going to say before I do, do that, I just remembered, you know, the other side of, of working with people who, you know, are from your own tribe, if you like. Most of these businesses, you, you hear businesses and, and people come home from work all the time. I don't like this guy or that guy's horrific or he's really rude or um, the boss. I hate my boss. I don't want to go to work. Well, that's because they put money above their own life path. And so they've got stuck in a situation with people who they will never resonate with. They could be completely and utterly different people. So if you want to resonate with your own tribe, follow your heart. That was my last point on that one. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like that. So what does, what does the day in the life of Phil Ascott look like now? Oh, <laughs> it depends. It changes so much. That's it. I never quite know what's going to go on. Oh, going to go on when I wake up. I mean, right now, it's kind of hanging out with the kids and doing the old interview. But a day in the life, I mean, an ideal day in the life would be I'd get up, uh, I'd get, get some gratitude together for what I've, what I've uh, experienced, what I've got, everything, my health that I've got back. I never walk up a flight of stairs without thanking the universe, you know? There was a time when I couldn't do it, at least very, very slowly. And, and so all these things stop you going into the day with the wrong attitude. Then I'll get up, I'll go outside, get the morning sun in my eyes, which if you join the Human Unleashed, you'll, you'll, you'll hear exactly why and and bare feet on the ground do a bit of exercise and then i might come up have a shower and with a cold shower afterwards another thing you'll find out about in human unleashed and then i eat and and, and feed the kids and then it's i would say what i like to put first i try not to go straight to the computer but often i do but on an ideal day i'd sit down and do an hour or an hour and a half drum practice because that's that, just doing one thing at once before you get sucked into the day's routine and then I go check my messages and I'll respond to you. Sometimes we have so many messages that you've got to respond to all across the Facebook groups and whatever. And then just whatever I put down for the day, whether it's writing something, whether it's making a video for my YouTube channel or putting up some posts on Facebook to promote Your YouTube that. YouTube channel is pretty popular as well. You've got the best part 10,000 followers on there. And it's, ex it's also extremely responsive, we found. Ah, yes, we get, get, get a lot of interaction. It used to be from angry vegans, but they seem to have thinned out now and it's more and more positivity is coming on. I mean, it's pretty much 99% positivity now, isn't it? It's wonderful, particularly with the recent chats that, that, that Ben's putting on the Human Unleashed, but they're free, so I'm also putting them on the YouTube channel. Beautiful, beautiful comments. And that in itself is so rewarding. And so I'll just spend the afternoon doing whatever comes up with that. Um, and I will... Um, because it's so compelling and, and messages and, and, and thanks and, and healing stories and whatever comes through all the time. And now, of course, with this incredible situation we're in and all the research we're all doing on it, you, people are sending you links all the time. You're following it down all sorts of rabbit holes. It's very difficult to turn that, that phone or the computer off. But um, as soon as I can, I do. It's sometimes not till seven or nine at night, but I'd rather it was about five. On a good day, it can be about five. Um, but that's just because I love it and I can't resist it and I can't resist interacting with these people. Um, so that's basically what goes on. And I might, if, if I'm in the process of writing a book, you know, I, actually, if I'm in the process of writing a book, I'm not like Ben. Ben can seem to write at any time of day. I don't know, but I have to do it early in the morning. When I am actually writing a book, I have to get up at five o'clock and get straight into it before anything else. 
and and that's the way I write. If I'm not writing, I can I can you know not have my best brain on. My best brain seems to be at about five o'clock in the morning, which is is sort of time yeah. to. I, wake I like up. that. That, that five a.m. time is is really good for writing as well. I had a, no one I else had is a, up. And you, I had an uncle actually. I don't think told, sorry, go on. Oh, I had yeah. I had an uncle. Um, his his name was Jonathan Escott or Jack S. Scott. Well, he used to write under various pseudonyms. His name was was Jack Escott. He was my uncle Jack, and I think he was the second most popular author in the states at one point. And he wrote a series of uh, detective novels. I must read. I've got the whole series, and I've only read a couple of them. But he was a great cartoonist, and he used to also um, he used to write loads of stuff i think he wrote a load of stuff for norman wisdom or sort of comedy stuff and and do you remember um that's life with esther ranson oh yeah and there was that weird dude called cyril what was his name cyril's odd odes or something and he used to sit in a chair and look all creepy with his glasses on that was all written by my uncle jack and i remember my he he told me that he couldn't work past midday he'd get up six o'clock he'd write and then midday that was it he was off and he'd just go out for lunch, hang out, walk on the beach. He used to, in the end, he, he of his his life, he used to, just used to live in a motorhome and travel around. And that that's another key, really, to people as well. Is you you need to give yourself the time of doing bugger all, yeah, in order to remain yourself, in order to you know get the the rest and the and the restore your energy in in the way that that you need. Oh, you you've know? got to. I mean, my my main thing is is a night a week carp fishing. And I get all my best ideas then, and, and it's been shut down to me now because we're all stuck in the house or whatever. And I'm not allowed to go out to a massive lake where there might be two other people and the nearest one will be 100 yards away. But for some bizarre reason, that's too close these days, so we're not allowed to go fishing. But um, at that, I'm missing. I'm finding I'm not recharging my batteries. I'm having to go out much more in the day and, and take some sun in or, or stand on the, on the ground with bare feet or just, just to get some proper light and I'm having to do that much more often because I'm not getting my main charge for the week. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the same. Look, you know, Sally and I went out for a walk the uh, day before yesterday, probably two and a half, three hours with the dogs. I was barefoot the whole time, you know, shirt off in the sunshine, getting the, the vitamin D topped up. And, you know, quite honestly, I, I don't think there's any job out there with any kind of salary attached that could prize me away from, from this lifestyle I've got right now. Absolutely. I, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine it. I mean, I'm 57 now coming up 58 next month and I, I I'm unemployable without a doubt. I can't think of anything I could really do in the, in the ordinary work workforce. So yeah, I'm happy with this and I've just got to ride it out and, um, and see where it goes. I, I have no other you option. You have faith that, you know, the, the money will always come in and you've probably got 10 or 12 sources of income as well you know yeah yeah there's a, unlike you, if you're in a job you piss your boss off and suddenly your entire income can go you know you lose that one client that you've got and you can you can be uh, finished absolutely yeah it's about setting up multiple streams of income and i reckon i remember walking around i listen to a lot of podcasts i have to look after the kids i can't sit down in front of the computer all the time um so most of my study is podcasts these days and and it's great because you turn the phone onto airplane mode nobody can ever phone me up and I've got the podcasts on and whether I'm shopping or fishing or driving around to a gig or whatever, I've always got a podcast on. And I was listening about multiple streams of income and I thought, God, that's a good idea. I must get onto that. And then I thought, hang on, I've got them. You know, they're, because they're not, none of them are returning a million quid a month at the moment. I, I sort of think, oh, well, I don't have multiple streams of income. But every time I'll sort of get low on money, something will pop up whether it's something coming through from, from the Human Unleashed that we're doing or my YouTube channel or, or, or some rent comes in from the houses that we've got, you know, over and above the mortgages when we can siphon a bit off from that. Um, or, or what else have I got? Well, there's the subtraction method course and, and the books on Amazon. And, and there's always something like... A affiliate income as well? Yeah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, I do actually. Yeah, the blue blocking glasses that that happen and little bits from iris tech and just just little fiddly bits that you set up and then after a while so weirdly they um they mount up and you find that you can actually eat <laughs> <laughs> and enjoy a wonderful lifestyle with you oh 
God, yes. I mean, I don't know what we'd do now because my partner's a key worker. She goes out. She's a nurse. And, um, and, and what would she do with the kids right now? They'd be looked after by some, somebody they don't really know or they might be back in school with sort of some half-assed whatever they're doing now when they put key workers' kids in school. But I get to hang out with them and they're great. I mean, I don't feed them a whole load of sugar so they don't go mad. They might get a bit of chocolate every day and, and then for half an hour they'll be punching each other. But after that, they're great because they live on a pretty low carb lifestyle like we do and, and they're pretty cool kids. So um, I, I'm really lucky. I, I, I think at the moment of um, all the single mums with sort of several toddlers stuck in a high rise flat feeding them cereal and wonder why, wondering why they're going insane. And so she is consequently. And, and it must be it must be horrific. So what what's great is to be able to know that we're helping people like that. When they find us, they can go, ah, that's why that's happening. You know, and, and the stories we hear, I mean, they're amazing. You see them and they, they are so rewarding, aren't they? It's tremendous. Yeah, wonderful stuff. Phil, thank you so much for uh, sharing your time with me. And I hope the kids haven't <laughs> uh, killed each other downstairs while we've been talking. I heard one little bit of shouting, but that's quite normal. I think they're all right. There was no big thud and then shouting, which is the problem usually. <laughs> but it's okay. They're cool. Excellent. Well, it's 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 just brilliant. It's always brilliant to you know to hear the story of of somebody who has made that transition. Well, you didn't really ever make that transition. You just forged your way through. It's not like you, you know, you were in a a boring job and had to tunnel your way out. You just you've made it for yourself. And uh, you know, I, just really, I, I remain stubbornly, stubbornly. Well, stubbornly, not so much as you. Stubbornly rebellious and nonconformist. I think is the is the is the plan that i had which everybody told me would never work out but actually it has yeah so to be happy as phil all you need to do is be stubbornly a nonconformist, follow your heart follow your path you know make those connections publish without you know knowing where you're ever going to get paid just keep sharing it keep sharing it don't look back it works absolutely perfect Phil, thank you so much, mate. Thank you, mate. All the best.